tumbleweeds are an iconic symbol of the Old West. It's hard to imagine the American desert without a rolling piece of dry vegetation. But most of the tumbleweeds you've seen are actually native to the Great Steppe of the Ural Mountains in Russia, making them historically more tied to Genghis Khan than American cowboys. I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floralogic. The famous tumbleweed you've seen in the movies is Tragus, aka the Russian thistle, or salsola. As their name suggests, it's a European plant whose seeds were accidentally introduced to North America in packages of flaxseed seeds. For most of its life, Tragus looks nothing like a wicker beach ball. It starts off as a soft herb, it's tender enough that some people put them in their power salads. But as it gets bigger, it gets woodier, pricklier, and round. At that point, it's too hard to eat, even for deer and other large mammals. Small rodents and insects use it for shelter, as the thorns turn it into an impenetrable fortress. Calitragus is an annual herb, so soon after it flowers, it starts to die. And their death gets the ball rolling. After it dies, the roots break off and the plant separates from the floor. By the time they're fully grown, they can be huge. Some can be over 10 meters in diameter, and yet they're light enough that a good gust of wind can push it around for miles. This is the most important moment of their lives. As they start to tumble, they drop seeds along their path. They're one of the few plants that spread their own seeds after they die. A lot of plants use animals to disperse their seeds. For example, tropical fruits rely on monkeys and other mammals to take the fruits and drop the seeds elsewhere. And avocados originally evolved to be eaten and have their seeds disseminated by the now extinct giant sloths. But the tumbleweed is a strong, independent plant that needs no sloth. It just uses the power of the wind. As it rolls, up to 200,000 seeds can be dropped by a single plant. And those who land in moist areas will have the best chance of survival. This strategy has helped them conquer most of the U.S. and southern Canada. It's worked a little too well, though, and now they're considered an invasive species. Multiple tumbleweeds can accumulate and create traffic jams, block houses, and damage cars as they roll through towns. But the main reason they're so dangerous is that they're very flammable. They have very high nitrate levels that turn them into wandering fire hazards. Efforts to control it have been futile. They reproduce quickly, prolifically, and over vast distances. But Calitragus is not all bad. They've been a reliable source of food in times of scarcity. During the Dust Bowl, they were the only source of food for millions of livestock across the U.S. And then there's other tumbleweeds that are not as destructive. The term tumbleweed generally refers to Calitragus, but it can more broadly refer to any plant that disperses its seed in the same way. The Plains tumbleweed is a native North American plant that produces delicious edible seeds and doesn't get quite as big as the Calitragus. The tumbling saltbush of Europe and Asia also rolls around at the end of its life, but it has smoother leaves. It gets to be around 1.5 meters tall. In the tropics of the Americas, the white amaranth, or white pigweed, makes tiny little tumbleweeds of about 50 centimeters. It has successfully been introduced to every other continent except Antarctica. Its cousins, the Mediterranean amaranth and the red root amaranth, are probably the most delicious tumbleweeds. Their leaves are great in stews. And lastly, the highly invasive diffuse knapweed, which can take over grasslands and harm animals' throats with its prickles. If you've ever been in the wilderness in North America, you're very likely to have seen one of these. These guys are immensely successful plants. Sometimes they affect human populations, but there's little we can do about them. They might be dangerous, but that's just how they roll. Oh, my car. Holy smokes. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes of Floralogic every other week. Thanks for watching. See ya.